Hello there folks and welcome to my tutorial video on how to create a particle burst animation in After Effects. Current version of After Effects I'm using is CS6, I don't think that matters. Uh, I will state now that there is, well this is optional, um, that I'm using a plugin called, uh, uh, what's it called? Think, 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 brain not working. Optical Flares by Video Copilot. It's optional. If you don't have that, then you know you can live without it. it. But if you've got it, then it's cool. I'd recommend it. It can make it better. But anyway, we'll just get straight into it, and I'll do the optional part at the end of the video. So, yeah, I think I was going to work that way anyway. Right. So first things first. This being my new, um, not new, first ever tutorial video. Reasons being because. Uh, I was trying to figure this out literally just yesterday. Um, I've been using After Effects for literally only about two weeks. So I'm <laughs> I'm really not that great at it, but I think I've learned pretty quickly actually. But I was desperately trying to figure out how to do this kind of particle burst animation thing for my intro. But could not find a single tutorial video anywhere. So it was driving me crazy. All I could find was bloody template videos where you download the template and you put your own thing in and it's all cheating and it's crap, basically. I don't agree with it. You know, it's best, I think it's best to just kind of pick it up and go with it and figure it out for yourself, plus it's cheaper. <laughs> but anyway, enough of ranting and rambling. Uh, first thing I want to do is go to composition, new composition, Name it, whatever you like, we'll just call this, uh, well, I was about to call it something completely different then. Burst, you name it, whatever your project is, and we click OK. Next thing we want to do is go to File, Import, and File again, or you could just press Control i like it says there. And select your logo, uh, make sure that it's a transparent PNG file. Uh, we'll just use my logo for this. And next, you see how it comes up here, we select that and click it and drag it. Uh, when it decides to freaking work, sometimes it does this, it's so infuriating. Right, so we select that, drag it into the middle. Well, basically you can drag it to wherever you want, but it's best in the middle. And next thing I want to do, down in this box here, select the little arrow. And select transform. Oh, wait, hang on. first things first as well, actually. I always forget this. Drag the composition length down to wh however long you want your composi composition to be. I usually go for about 10 seconds, but it, it's obviously your choice, isn't it? Uh, next thing, I'll, I'll drag this to one second just so it gives a little bit of room at the start. So, right, now we're set up there. We select the little stopwatch icon next to scale. And that will instantly create a key point, keyframe, whatever it's called. What is it called? Keyframe, yeah, okay, I was right. So we want to select that and enter zero. So it completely removes it. Uh, next thing, we go up here, and where it says next frame, select that twice. This is personal preference, by the way. You can do it however uh, you want it, how many frames you want it, whatever whatever works best for your video. And then back down at scale we select the number and put in whatever number you want. I'll put 65 and that's about the right size. Cool. So yeah that's that done and you can see that kind of just springs into life. So boom. So the next thing we want to do is oh, close all that down. Select that and we press Control and D, or Command and D if you're on a Mac, I believe that's right. So they're exactly the same. You can even check it by soloing it. It does exactly the same thing. So yeah. See? Perfect. Next thing we want to do is select the top one, because this is the one that's in front. And what do we want to do, Matt? I really can't remember. 
I've slept since then, since I've done this last. Right, so we've got it selected. So we go up to Effect, and we go to Simulation, and we go across, and we go to Scatterize. Right, so then, to make this easier, you can do this uh, a couple of ways. You can either do it up there, or do it this way. I prefer to do it this way, because I can see what's going on on the timeline then. We click uh, the arrow next to the top logo, and then we click the effects arrow, then on scatterize. And then, uh, so we're at the point, if we drag this to where it's the first frame where it gets to its full size, so it'll be that one. And we want to select the stopwatch icon on scatter, and that's at zero, that's perfect. So next thing we want to do is drag this all the way to the end of the composition. And then uh, we want to select this and drag it to, uh, I'll say about a thousand. I've just noticed something else I forgot as well. But anyway, that's the scatter done. That is the scatter done. But there is another thing we need to do, which I completely forgot to do. Transform. And see, select the scale. And what we want to do is drag this. So it's basically something like that. So by the time, so basically it kind of springs out and boom like that and it just expands. See, look at that, that's amazing. And of course by the e towards the end it's just kind of little speckles floating around which I think is a pretty cool effect. I normally do that before I apply the scatter effect, I just completely forgot, but it doesn't really matter. Obviously you get the same effect. So yeah, that is essentially it. Uh, click play. Obviously it might be a bit weird, but with uh, rendering frames and stuff. But yeah, that's essentially it. Now, as I was saying about the optional part, if you want it to look a little bit better, I think it makes it look better anyway. Uh, you want to uh, right-click down here in this box, go over to New, and select Solid. And we'll just title this Light. Yeah, title it however you want. Make sure it's underneath all of the others. Uh, with it selected, we want to go up to Effect, oops, and down to Video Copilot, and then select Optical Flares. Uh, we want to also select Options up here, and it eventually decides to load. There we go. Right. Uh, you can obviously select whatever. Oops, did not mean to do that. You can select whatever style flare uh, you want in the presets, whatever. But basically, what we we'll just stick with this one for now. What we want to do, we just want this light and you know the glow around it and stuff. So we don't want any of this. So anything that's not part of the main orb, we get rid of it. So like multi iris, we'll get rid of that. Multi iris again, get rid of that. Multi iris again, get rid of that. And again, and again. And that's it. So we've just got that one single light. So now we'll click OK. And we'll select that and drag it right to the middle where we know our logo is. Uh, that's as near as damn it. Uh, you can change the colour over here. If This is another preference. I'm no designer expert, but because my logo has got like a blue tint to it, we'll select the logo. The, uh, Flare the light to be a bit blue. Why is that not? Right, there we go. Yeah, we'll go for that. That's not looking at all like it is in the display. Make it a bit darker then, just to be a bit safe. Yeah. So put the colour you want, basically. Okay. And uh, what's next? What's next? What's next? Right, okay, so we go down to here, and on the first second, 
so that's where the picture starts to come in basically we get it to there and we go to is it effects then optical flares and we select scale is it the scale yes I believe it is uh, so we select zero and then go two frames along and we bump up that scale to however long you want it, however big you want it to be really like I say it is personal preference, we'll select this at a good healthy 200 and look at that, that looks pretty beautiful already I believe so yeah I believe as well oh no there is a single, um, another thing I need to do with the scale thing we get we drag that all the way along to the end of composition again and we'll put that back at zero so basically the light bursts in and it gradually fades out and what you end up with is something like that boom can't really see that great because it's not rendered but yeah once it's rendered I'll just let it render the frames and then you can see it a bit better and I'll play it through again but yeah that is essentially it it doesn't take long um, I was it took me absolutely ages to figure out how to do it and when I couldn't see couldn't find a tutorial video I was like screw this I'm gonna have to go in and figure it out myself basically and I did I mean there's I'm sure there's a number of ways to do this and you should definitely be able to do it better but as, as I couldn't, as I say, I couldn't find a single tutorial video, so I thought I'd get one up. If it has saves at least one person the stress that I went through, then it means mission accomplished. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. There you can see how it works. Obviously, it looks better when it's fully rendered, but yes, it's cool. There's obviously more things you can do to it to make it look even better. This is just a quick basic thing. You can have a play with the settings, whatever you think is best. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, feel free to check out my other videos where I don't do tutorials. I actually have fun and do Let's Plays. Uh, I swear and curse and go freaking crazy and just have a laugh, basically. Yeah, it would be great if you could watch it. Um, but yeah, like I say, I hope you've liked the video. I hope it's helped you out. And feel free to subscribe, please. <laughs> uh, like the video, whatever, share, you know, watch the other videos. Hopefully you'll enjoy them even more. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all later. Bye for now.